Well, hello and welcome to the Bellicose Nation. This week, the scuttlebutt is all about gun control and what we can do to prevent another nutbag from waltzing into a public place and commence to killing innocent people. Now, it would seem as though this was a last straw. That we've had enough. But have we really? <laughs> I don't think we've had enough. I don't think we've had enough of the killing. I don't think we've had enough of the tears. And why do I say that? Because rather than do the hard work to address the real issues, we are wasting time and momentum on the politics of, of uh, gun bans, which are just nothing more than a sugar pill. Now, I know some of you are inclined to think, that's right, that's exactly what we need to do. And i and tell you the truth, I don't blame you for instinctively concluding that, but Let's let's try to get past the, the soundbite logic and the mindless, we got to do something, and explore this a little bit, and let's see if at the end you can answer yes to this most important question at this hour. Will the new changes reasonably stop anyone from committing mass murder like this again, even with firearms? And I don't believe you can answer yes to that question, and here's why. There are 315 million people in the United States, and there are 300 million guns. Did you know that? There, are more than, there is more than one gun for each adult. And if we can't practically round up 13 million illegals who are in McDonald's and out on the job and everywhere, how are we going to pry 30 times that number of guns out of the homes and closets of America? So it's a given. There will always be a lot of guns in this country. The only question is, who will have them? Also, we have a Second Amendment, and I'm not going to get into the depth of that, but I think it's fair to say most people agree, including the Supreme Court, that Americans do have a basic right to own some level of firearm. So between those two facts alone, it tells you no matter what is proposed, there are going to be hundreds of millions of guns still in this country. In other words, when all the votes are cast and all the new laws are written, we will have done next to nothing to prevent a nut job from doing the same thing because we're focusing on non-issues. Uh, now, right now, what's the boogeyman? The boogeyman is the assault weapon. Dun, da, da, dun. Now, let's address that. Now, understandably, most people are so misled on this subject because well, there's so much information and most people really aren't into guns all that much. But that's my job here to make it understandable for you. And I don't want to hear anything from the gun crowd either criticizing me because I'm speaking in general terms here on a gun form. I would speak with a little more specific, uh, specificity. So let's get into this. Assault weapons. Now, I don't care what Obama says and others who try to portray that these are uh, assault weapons. These are not assault weapons. These are civilian versions of them. The most notable difference is the guts. Every real assault weapon, by definition, can fire at a much greater rate of fire than you can buy at the local gun shop. Real weapons of war can fire like a machine gun or fully automatic. The civilian versions can't fire any faster than guns that were made 100 years ago. That's right, folks. These scary-looking military rifles you keep hearing about only fire semi-auto, which means for each pull of the trigger, fires one bullet. The faster you pull the trigger, the faster the bullets come out. Nothing new there. In fact, the old revolver kind of worked the same way. Number two, high-capacity magazines. This, I'm telling you, is the only real practical difference between the assault-styled weapons and, say, a semi-auto shotgun. The magazine, the magazine holds more rounds, of, of course. 30-round magazines are the most common, and they are everywhere. Magazines have been around for a long time, but you would think that they are some new invention you know, causing people of late to commit mass murder. 30-round magazine has, uh, has really actually has a very small advantage to the killer because they, are all, they always choose unarmed victims. If you're in a firefight with somebody else with a gun, it can have some advantage. But when you're walking 
through a room of unarmed people cowering in the corner, you can just change magazines rather rapidly. In fact, if you've never touched a gun, uh, within about 10 minutes, you could learn to change the magazine in about two, three seconds. It just doesn't take that long. So it's meaningless, uh, almost meaningless, to ban a 30-round magazine. Now, let's go to number three, high-powered ammunition. Uh, now, here is another phrase we we've seen thrown out by the talking heads who are typically, they got to be reading off a script. And evidently, they have no idea what they're talking about and haven't done any homework. Did you know, in many places, it's illegal to even hunt deer with the so-called assault weapon? You know why? The bullet is just too small. It's not powerful enough to, predict to predictably allow for a humane deer kill. After World War II, uh, all military started to go to a smaller round because they, they figured out engagements were much closer. With a smaller round, you could carry more bullets and so forth. So uh, the truth of it is the typical deer rifle, a 30-30 deer rifle, sh shoots a much more powerful uh, bullet than what our guys in Afghanistan are using right now. Uh, not that they're not powerful enough to kill people, but they're just not some super bullet as we so often hear. So what's really going on here? My friends, let me break it down for you. This is the wedge technique of politics. Some politicians want to ban nearly every gun, but they need a starting point, and they know that targeting assault weapons are, are really meaningless in stopping crime or stopping unstable people from committing mass murder, but they want to move the ball forward in banning guns wholesale. So they're peeling off one class of guns at a time, and the assault weapon kind of has this menacing look. It's an easy target, if you will. But I can tell you the real prize for them is handguns. And they are foaming at the mouth to get handguns banned uh, because most murders are carried out by handguns. Rifles only account for a small amount anyway. But wait a minute, wait a minute, you asked. I thought this was all about saving kids in schoolhouses. I'm sorry, but I don't hear anything that's being put on the table that makes one kid any safer. And that is what is so troubling to me. You know, when you put all these politics aside and you ask yourself this question, and I want you to think about this this week. I got a question. If you, if you wanted to kill a lot of children at your local school, how hard would it be for you to do so? I'm asking you, what would it take for you to waltz into your school to get in there if you were on a suicide mission to go there and kill as many as you could with guns or even improvised explosions as they used in Columbine? When you think in these terms, you realize how futile it is to ban magazines when even, even greater damage can be done with a typical shotgun. That's right, a pump shotgun. All right, now here's my conclusion. You are not going to get rid of 300 million guns. You, actually, you would start a war if you tried. Uh, using this moment to play gun politics rather than take meaningful action to secure children uh, in schools in a direct way, I'm going to tell you, is unforgivable to me. We should be looking at the profile of people who do these randomly acts and see how we can better insulate these people from accessing certain information, from accessing certain firearms and certain materials, explosive materials. Disarming my neighbor or taking away his 30-round magazine does not make that school any more safe. Now, while this country is full of some of the best people, you know, the truth of it is, we are becoming a sick society. We have social breakdown all around us. And the freedom now to explore the most vile forms of entertainment are going to ensure more valueless zombies looking to make a name for themselves as they exit the world. I'm telling you, man, we are not yet ready to deal with this. And that's why I suspect we will lose decades chasing this sugar pill called gun bans. Now, I'm going to tell you, we owe it to these victims and we owe it to their families to find real progress in preventing these attacks where we can. Unfortunately, we don't even seem to be going in that direction. You've, you've heard my two cents. Now, I want to hear your opinion. Of course, if you enjoy exploring these issues of the day, subscribe. 
uh, agreement is not necessary. Until the next time, this is the Bellicose Nation. Thank <laughs> you.